Welcome to St Sebastian's at Home on Remembrance Sunday. We had hoped to hold a service in church today, but sadly the lockdown intervened. Particular welcome to anyone joining us for the first time. We're very glad that you could be with us today. Before our first song, I, want, I invite you to join in the following responses of praise. We stand before the throne of God with countless crowds from every nation and race, tribe and language. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. to the UNESCO Constitution says that wars begin in the minds of men, of men and women. 
we all have wrong attitudes towards other people and we need to ask God's forgiveness. So we come now to our confession. Let us pray. On our sins and failings and those of the world in which we live, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On human envy, selfish ambition, greed, pride, and rebellion against your just rule, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. On our failure to forgive, to seek peace, and to heal division, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing the Lord's My Shepherd together. The Lord's my shepherd, I will not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in Jesus. And I will trust in Jesus and trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me on. Because my ways in righteousness and the anointings my head with oil and my cup I feast on his pure delights, and I will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in you, and I will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home, and though I walk chapter 8 verse 31 to 39 a great passage this one what then shall we say in response to this if God is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. 
who is he that condemns Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to start with a short quiz. I'd like you to see if you can identify some medals. Pictures will appear on the screen. I'll give you a little time to think about it before revealing the answer. Let's start with an easy one. Can you identify this medal? Yes, it's the Victoria Cross given for gallantry in the face of the enemy. Perhaps the most famous of all medals. Okay, let's try another one. What medal is this? You were right if you said the George Cross, which is given for outstanding acts of courage in dangerous conditions, not necessarily in wartime. Here's another one. A bit more difficult perhaps, what medal is this? That's the military cross, originally given to officers and warrant officers for gallant and distinguished services in action. Here's the last one. Can you identify this medal? That was a bit more difficult. It's the Distinguished Conduct Medal, inaugurated by Queen Victoria and given to other ranks for distinguished, gallant and good conduct in the field. Now I'm going to show you a picture of a grave in our churchyard. It belongs to 2nd Lieutenant Alfred Ollie, DCM. And DCM, of course, means that he was awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal. I expect you're wondering what he did to deserve that medal. He was awarded it in 1917 when he was a sergeant with the York and Lancaster regiments. Here is the citation. For conspicuous gallantry and devotion to duty, he led his men with great courage and coolness during the offensive, afterwards showing great ability in organising working and carrying parties under very trying conditions. He rendered great help in the clearing of, clearing of the wounded, and his example throughout has been magnificent into the whole of the, his battalion. It's no surprise that Alfred Ollie was promoted first to Warrant Officer Second Class and later to Second Lieutenant with the Duke of Wellington's regiment. His bravery was rewarded. Alfred's medal was round, but 
It's interesting and noticeable that many of the medals awarded for the greatest acts of bravery, the Victoria Cross, the George Cross, and so on, they are shaped like a cross. I wonder if you've ever wondered uh, why that may be the case. It's because when Jesus died in a on a cross in our place, he committed the greatest act of bravery in history. Our Bible reading says, God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Jesus did not deserve to die, but he died to take the punishment for the sins of the world. That means that whatever you and I have done wrong can be forgiven. All we need to do is say yes to what Jesus has done for us, to his act of outstanding bravery on the cross. You might want to pray something like this. Yes, Jesus, I accept that I have done wrong in my life. Yes, Jesus, I receive the forgiveness that you won for me by dying on the cross. Yes, Jesus, I choose to follow you for the rest of my life. Please help me to live for you. Amen. We're going to sing how deep the Father's love for us. Oh 
the chosen one, bring many sons to glory. Our prayers today will contain a response. There will be a pause and then I will say, in faith we pray, and then we say together, we pray to you, our God. So, in faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. As we look towards Remembrance Day on the 11th of November, we hold before you those people who have been injured or who have died in active service. As we honour their courage and cherish their memory, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life, peace and hope. Perhaps there is someone you can offer in prayer now, either out loud or in the quiet of your heart. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. As we have looked back at the people who have passed, we lift to you the members of the armed forces today in this country, that you will give them courage, understanding and confidence as keepers of the peace and service to this country. We lift to you also the frontline workers in the police, the health service and fire services as they battle through with the current pandemic. Pour out your grace and knowledge of your presence as they work during the coming days. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. As we look to that day when you will gather people from north and south, east and west, guide with your just and gentle wisdom all who take counsel for the nations of the world, those in government, and authority, that all your people may spend their days in security, freedom and peace, the places of the world that have been in times of trouble in recent weeks. We lift them to you now. Perhaps there is an area of the world or this country you can offer in prayer or in the quiet of your heart. In faith, we pray, we pray to you, our God. As we look towards the church here on earth, we pray for your guidance in the coming months as we are unable to meet together in our usual way. That we will be encouraged and meet with you, our God, that this may bring us closer to you. That you will strengthen us in your service and fill our hearts with longing for your kingdom. And please sustain the faith and hope of those who are lonely, oppressed and anxious. For those who are bereaved and the people who are in need of your healing in body, mind and spirit. Perhaps there is a name that has come to you now and we can offer that in prayer, either out loud or in the quiet of your heart. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our services will be online during lockdown and we will let you know when we can gather in church once again. In the meantime, don't forget the Monday evening prayer meeting 
on Zoom and that many of the home groups are also meeting by Zoom. Before our final song, we're going to close with some responses. They should appear on the screen. Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in your eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us in the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Amen. Let's sing Cornerstone together. And a final blessing. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen.
let us remember with thanksgiving to God those who died for their country in times of war, those we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who lived and died in the service of others. From the First World War, we remember Frederick Allen, Arthur Annett, Dudley Barnard, Sidney Bedford, Arthur Bendel, Wilfred Bingham, Frederick Brandt, Charles Brandt, Alfred Butler, Charles Chamberlain, Joseph Giles, William Greenman, Alfred Herdwell, Frank Langley, Henry Lovick, Sidney Luca, Percy Maynard, William Munday, Sidney Murrell, Alfred Parker, James Perry, Frederick Piffa, John Robertson, Robert Rogers, Arthur Sharp, Frank Sutton, Charles Townsend, Edwin Tyrrell, Humphrey Upson, Worthy Vickery, Frederick Wakefield, William Werrell, Joseph Whitaker. From the Second World War, we remember William Bidmead, Cyril Billet, Albert Butler, Herbert Carter, Charles Clacy, Thomas Edwards, Robert Frost, Walter John Gale, Hugh Hurden, A. W. W. Kerr, Reg Lewington, Roland Lyons, Fred Pitt, Alfred Holden, Frederick Pugh, Leslie Brittlesworth, James Reason, William Reason, Kenneth Smith, Raymond Tarrant, Clive Young, and William Walder. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
let us pray. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray you, in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth be filled with the knowledge of your love through jesus christ our lord amen <laughs>